I'm in my dining room. Today has been a very busy day, but as always, I made sure and worked on an unfinished object today because it's Thursday and today is unfinished object day. So again, I guess it's apparently this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, so this needs to be done on June 1st. So I have a feeling it's not going to get done in time. So this will not be entered at IOLI. But I'm going to finish it anyway, and so I'm going to show you my progress today. I have um, haven't sewn on all, I haven't basted on all the motifs. I'm looking over at it right now. But I've got them all positioned, and most are basted on. The um, paisleys need to go on. But the pillow has helped so much, so I'm really glad I got it now. And I'll show it to you again just to remind you. I'm clearing up around it so that you can see what I've got done. There's a lot of work going on this table right now. We have a sprinkler system we're putting in for the for the raised beds drip. I have some unfinished projects sitting across the table for me. I have leftovers from other projects. I have window projects. Oh my gosh, so many unfinished things to be addressed. But right now I'm going to focus and I'm going to show you the Irish crochet. All right, on this old receiving blanket, I have arranged these guys, and then now, and you've seen this before. This is, I've based it on the flowers, I've based it on the leaves. Although I had to take these two leaves off because they were just not fitting right with the paisley edge. But here is the paisley edge. So I'm going to zoom out. Hopefully you can see all that. Ignore anything else that comes into the frame. But there you go. So the paisley goes around the edge, and then I will do some joining. Now, interestingly, I'm going to show you some pictures in a book. So Moira Trainer, who is, the person is that I got both the roses and the paisley pattern from, I believe I found this pattern in, um, I'm trying to remember what book it is, like a Dover publication or like one of those little Irish crochet little magazine things. I'll pull it out and... Um, eventually figure out what it came from. But this is a common leaf in things. And then, but there are joining stitches that do not match the clones or the clones lace technique that Moira uses. And so I'm gonna go show you in the book my options for these joining stitches and see what you think. And I definitely want you to comment and let me know. So as one does when they start a new craft, they collect all the information they can get. And so uh, I think Kelly found this book for me in the UK. So this is uh, t The Techniques of Irish Crochet by Ina Maidens. And in this book, as in addition to a history and all kinds of information, she has a page. I'm going to thumb to that page because I sat and looked at this the other day. Stitches. Be careful. Like there's the clunes knot. But um, this is all written in British crochet terms, so you have to be careful um, that you know that. So these are my options for joining. Uh, it call, this is called the treble mesh, which means double crochet mesh in American terms. This is a single pico mesh. This is a, a double point mesh and a diamond mesh with pico. And these are all these are all joining stitches that I can use. This is the traditional um, clone stitch mesh, and this is the one I learned from Moira Trainer. Here is a chain trefoil mesh and a uh, clone stitch trefoil mesh. We learned this one too from Moira. Um, and then there's these, which okay, a buttonhole diamond mesh, and it, these are needle lace joining techniques, which I think is really cool. Buttonhole mesh with Pico. Uh, so I could grab my needle and thread and I could join with my needle and thread, which I think is something I didn't even think about. Mesh with crown. I think definitely no on this one because I think it's way too busy. This would need to go in open areas where you have a lot of space. And then mesh with buttonhole and Pico, which is another one I could do. And they have examples like, look at that fine, fine thing. This definitely is partially to do with, this is crochet. And I think it's the triple clones, but it might be a Pico. Well, it says, let's see. No, it doesn't say. Um, but this is definitely a thread change as well as a different stitch. 
And then there's a picture of stitches. These ones are hardly any connecting stitches at all. They really just connected the motifs together. Mine's gonna need more connecting. Like this, maybe. I kind of like that one, actually. Uh, but that is needle lace join. This is crochet join. That's really random. And then there's this one, another one of those really fine ones. I do kind of like the really fine ones. And this one. This one's got the shamrock clones join. But it's really crazy. The examples that I've seen have not gone that fine with their thread. And I don't think the thread I've chosen will be this fine. This one is just a chain. Oh no, I think that's a buttonhole pico. These are edgings. So I will put an edging on. So that's another thing I have to kind of figure out is what edging. This is the edging that's on the paisleys. So let's see if there's more here. No, these are all just motifs that I could have chosen from. Butterfly, which is kind of cool. So, uh, and a bee. There, this is the this is not the full leaf, but see this little leaf here? Those are the leaves that I did in this. So here's my leaves, which is you put a cording in and then I crocheted over the cording and then joined it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's super easy. I sat and did all these motifs last year. This has scared me. And actually, I have to say, this book has kind of made me feel like I can do it. So that's good. Here's some more, look at that. Oh my goodness, that's so fine. So here's some more examples to get ideas. There, this is just joined with no picots or anything. It's just plain chains joining it. And there's that one. I think I already showed you that one, but that one's got the, it looks like two clones or clones, clones. This one is just mesh, probably needle, but I don't know that. There's picots, it looks like. There, here's one with lots of stuff. That's kind of cool, isn't it? That joining right there. But those are more motifs, and I'm not making more motifs. I kind of feel like this is probably about how mine's going to look. But we'll see. I'm going to really try to find a fine hook. There, look how fine that is. So, anyway, there we go. This is where I'm going and this is where I'm at. Let's hope I don't lose steam. There it is. Now I have to do the hard part, the crocheting join and figure out how this is gonna go. I kinda think I'm gonna do circles around the, oh, around the center, circles around the center flower and then join as I hit things. But I don't know. Now I'm still basting and then next I'm gonna hide these ends that I haven't gotten hidden yet. Right here is some, um, there's a few. And then I will start joining because I'm putting it off. I'm putting it off as long as possible because this is the reason why this didn't get finished right away is as a little bit afraid of the joining stitch. I just am a lot more unsure of myself when it comes to joining than I am the motifs. The motifs are a piece of cake. It's the joining that's a little scary. Have you guys ever done Irish crochet? I love the way it looks, and of course, because I'm an Edwardian costumer, this stuff is right in that era. That is the peak of the Irish crochet era. I mean, toward the end, maybe even. But um, so I'm excited to master it and um, then move on to clothing, which is what I'd like to do next. So wish me luck. Um, definitely make a comment. Did you see a join you liked? Is there one that you like better than the others? Do you think will be more appropriate for this? I don't know what I'm doing yet, so we'll see. Um, I'll let you know when I get there, and probably this will be the topic of conversation on Monday as well as today, and probably Thursday as well. But I'll let you know. I do have a new unfinished project because it's now gone into storage for a month, which means it's now moved into the unfinished zone. Slippers for my grandson. It's been I've been carrying it in my purse for a month and have not touched it. So I think it's just moved into the unfinished zone. Um... Anyway, that's it for me tonight. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do. Tell your friends. Do you guys have lots of stashed, unfinished things or even unfinished, unstarted things? I kind of, this that's going to creep into this channel more and more, maybe, if I ever come to the bottom of the unfinished things. Um, remember to subscribe and ring the bell. Uh, like this video and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And definitely don't forget, I love to get pictures of either your unfinished thing or the finished thing you've made progress on or finished. 
I know Tony has done five more rows. I'm going to show you a picture next week when we have maybe done for one mitt. All right. I'll see you on uh, Monday. Bye.